Hello, my name is Pittsburgh Pat, and I'm here with Marco Fasati. Marco, I met you on uh, Facebook just a little while ago, and I saw that you have a Dungeons and Dragons channel, and uh, I wanted to talk to you about that today. How are you today? Buonasera. Hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. Uh, thank you for your invitation. Okay. I'm You're here, welcome. ready to all of your questions. Oh, very good. So, you have a, a wonderful um, Facebook presence under the name of it, it's about Dungeons and Dragons. What's the name of your um, of your? Uh, okay, the uh, label presence. is a Sign of the Dragon. Sign okay. of the Dragon. Sign of the Dragon was founded in uh, September 2019. Okay, uh, I'm one of the two founders. Uh, the other founder is uh, Marco Bertini who is a friend of mine that lives uh, not so near to me in Italy, okay? I live in North Italy, mm -hmm. uh, north of 20 kilometers uh, north of Milan, the biggest city in north of Italy, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, while he lives in Tuscany, in the center of Italy, okay? Mm -hmm. Near Florence in Viareggio on the Tyrrhenian Sea. Uh, actually, uh, even he's a friend of mine, We've met each other only two times for more than, not more than two, three hours. Okay. We met, uh, uh, first time we met in 2022, after three years we've worked together. Okay. Uh, I met uh, Marco Bertini in uh, February 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. On uh, the, mm, the most important Italian Facebook page about Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Uh, Marco, uh, has uh, had at the time had already published uh, a volume on the dmskilled.com. Okay, uh, it's a quite successful adventure. Its name is the Second Black Dome. Okay, okay. In Italian La Seconda Albanese. Ah, at the time he had uh, written it only in Italian, and uh, he was looking for someone who did a translation. Okay, I, I, I don't know why. Uh, but I I, I, uh, I apply myself for that work, okay? <laughs> I, I really don't know why. Oh, more specifically, uh, I, at that time, I wanted to enter in the uh, third-party uh, RPG business, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't enough information. Uh, I, I didn't know where to go, what to do. So I, I, I said to Marco Bertini, okay, I will translate for you for free, okay, in English, wow. uh, there are more or less uh, 50 pages, okay, uh, 50 pages uh, on, a, on a Word document, uh, I, I will translate it for free. Okay. That's a, uh, that's a heck of an endeavor, I have to say. Uh, I've just been uh, editing novels in my native language and okay. uh, people charge a lot of money for that and it's time consuming. I can't even imagine taking on a translation project like but that. I, I did it for free because I, I wanted to know more about that word, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and so well, when Marco uh, sent me a copy of his work, uh, it was awesome. Okay, okay. The adventure is a good adventure, okay? Mm -hmm. But it was awesome on a layout, on graphics, uh, on images. Uh, it, it seems to me uh, uh, it looked like the, uh, it looked like uh, uh, an official product. Okay, mm. so uh, I I had a, already uh, a lot of pages written, okay, uh, in Word uh, about uh, Dungeons and Dragons and other RPGs, uh, but what stopped me uh, to publish them was because I I'm not. I haven't skill in uh, layout, in graphics, in uh, in editing and publishing. So I asked Marco, uh, Marco, what do you think? I wrote, I write, I write directly in English because uh, uh, American or English uh, language mar market is much more bigger than uh, Italian market in sure. RPGs. They are incomparable. Uh, Italian market is smaller, smaller, smaller than American or English uh, language market. Sure. Very, very small. 
Uh, so I, I write directly in English, and you will take care of all other stuff. What do you think? We share expenses, we share revenues. What do you think? We create a label, sign of the dragon. Okay, what do you think? He accepted. We started uh, on uh, 7 September 2019 with our first product, World of Magic. It was a simple collection of more or less 80, 80 magic items and 20, 30, and 20, 30 spells. Okay. Um, and it, it did very good. Good. In a few day, in a few days, we hit uh, more than five hundred units sold. Wow, that's uh, on uh, DM make, Guild. That's great. Uh, yeah, for DM Guild, just just a number. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on DM Guild, they are actually uh, more or less uh, thirty five thousand of volumes. Only four percent of them, so. More or less uh, 100, 1,000 and 500 uh, uh, have uh, only 4% of them have uh, at least uh, 1,000 units sold. Right. Okay. We have 18 volumes. 14 of them, 14 of them have at least 1,000 units sold. Fantastic. Okay. That's amazing. So, so uh, we, we we found uh, uh, a, a framework uh, and uh, uh, a framework that that currently is uh, successful on the end skill, okay, uh, and so we we continue. Uh, in my opinion, our business model uh, must change in somewhat change. Uh, we are expecting the new edition of the MD. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. D&D &D one. Will, uh, one D&D &D will occur uh, on May or June 2024, so in the next four or five months. Uh, we will change something. Uh, we'll, we'll surely update our 18 volumes to the new rules, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, and uh, probably uh, we'll focus... Uh, also on some small adventures that we haven't we haven't explored that field for for the moment okay gotcha so we will we'll probably go in that in that direction uh, but of course we had to change something after four years every business model after four or five years must be changed yes. in order must must be renewed uh, mm -hmm. in order in order to keep continuing Okay, uh, in order to keep uh, continuing be successful, we must change something. Well, so now you we have do. so much more experience, you can look at your business model with that experience specific to yeah. this particular way of publishing. And I wanted to say, like the DMs Guild, I've been very intrigued. I've a uh, writing background and written a novel and short stories, and I've been considering publishing something on DMs Guild. It's, it's excellent. I think that the viewers that of this particular podcast would love to know more about that process because i think a lot of them are players who might want to do this someday is it something you would okay. encourage for everyone or is it a big uh obstacle do you think okay uh i will give you a couple of advices of counsels for for your public okay? sure uh first thing you're not good at everything there's something you are good at, but there's also something you are not good at. So find someone to share the bar. Find someone to share the activities. Find someone who will take care of the things you are not able or the things you don't like mm. and focus only on the things you are good at. I only like advice. the things you like. It. Uh, when we started with Mark, mm -hmm. we never met. We met on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We we chat only by messages using uh, a messenger or WhatsApp. WhatsApp uh, in Italy is much more. Uh, yeah, common. WhatsApp is wonderful um, for 
international communications as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I know in America, in uh, USA, uh, FaceTime or Snapchat are uh, more used. Uh, in Italy, WhatsApp is yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the, the most used uh, application. Uh, we only we only chat through messages. We never make a phone call. Okay, and the first two products published in 2019 were made and were successful even if we haven't met each other, even if we hadn't talked by phone. Okay. That's amazing. Just because everyone was had clearly what to do and everyone was focused in doing that. Uh, we started to talk after the, the second volume, okay? And now we usually listen a couple of times a week, okay? But again, we, we met uh, for the first time, we have met uh, in 2022 at the most important uh, RPG fair Italian in Italy, uh, which is held in Modena, um, mm. a town uh, at, between more or less at the same distance between my own place and his own place, okay? And uh, we met each but just for a couple of hours because uh, the, the other important things is that the DM skill can be a starter set for future works, for more important works. For mm. example, after... Uh, the first volumes, uh, some uh, Italian and international uh, publishers contacted us ah. for works. Uh, uh, personally, I have uh, at this moment uh, uh, around 30 publications, 30 volumes published by wow. Italian and other uh, publishers. And also Marco, my partner, had some contracts with other with other publishers. And we were at that fair working for two different publishers. <laughs> <laughs> so we had we had only just a couple of hours. <laughs> to, to meet each other, uh, to, to shake hands, to give a hug, to yep. give a high five, and then went back to work. <laughs> so we did the same uh, this year in 2023, always at the same fair. And so we, we, we never met each other, but the model is, is a sex world. So it isn't important. It is important to clearly have in mind what to do. Mm, yes. Who, what must be done and who must do it. I think that's one of the reasons I like written communication is, you know, but being a writer. But that way, there's a, a, a clear line of the conversation. Yes. So it's not just what I recall and what was actually said, because I can distort that. But when it's actually written down, mm -hmm. it's pretty clear. And then in getting those kinds of ideas. I think the other thing about the process of writing is that uh, it makes the amorphous ideas in my head, the cloudy ideas more solid. And so I'm in order to communicate with another human being in writing, I must be precise. And I agree language. with you. I agree with you, Pat. And I add one more, one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in my real life, I have been a consultant for the most important uh, insurance companies and banks in Italy. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Italian banks and Italian insurance companies are stern, strict, severe. Okay. Sure. Uh, this, kind, this kind of approach uh, that I must naturally have when dealing with the subjects is the same I use in my RPG works. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, one of the most important edges in confront of other designer. 
You have because, a very serious attitude towards it as opposed I, it's a the material may be used in a frivolous or a game like fashion, a very pleasant fashion, but you actually have a very business like approach to to your yeah, yes. creation. This process. is very important. Uh, even mm. some some of, uh, of some of the CEOs which I work, uh, CEOs of RPG Italian publishers, okay, uh, mm. said okay, you you under this aspect you are very different from the others okay uh, i don't mean in a good way i'm not meaning that the others are not serious okay right all, all others are serious uh others probably have just another kind of approach to, to the world well that's uh, what i'm interested in I, I i like to see how people approach it so do you commit a certain number of hours a day to this or per week is it a is it structured in your schedule, or are you more of a person that's like, okay, I'm inspired to write about this now, so I will spend the next seven hours writing this, you know? Okay, um, no, I usually I I cannot commit uh, uh, a lot of hours per day. Right. Okay, uh, I can't. Um, my 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 other work is very is very full. It's very uh, gives me a very busy life. Understood. Um, usually. I I create uh, in two moments on weekends, usually on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, or when traveling, when traveling oh, mm -hmm. on uh, on train uh, by train. So uh, mm -hmm. when I travel by train, I um, currently I work uh, uh, three days a week in office. And uh, the other days uh, at home. Okay. When I go to office, I take the train. I usually it usually takes uh, forty five or fifty minutes to reach uh, my office. During this uh, this time, during this period, I wrote with this. Uh, I wrote very fast. I wrote directly in English. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and usually. In one go in one in one way and the return, I wrote uh, three four pages uh, of word. That's wonderful. I think that's amazing because I think see a lot of in America there aren't a lot of people who commute by train in the larger cities maybe New York City that sort of thing, but most people drive and one of the disadvantages to that is that. What what happens is as a result of that is that people consume media, so they listen to like this. They'll listen to a podcast, or that's it. nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. But if if one is a creator such as you are, you can utilize that time in a constructive yeah. way. And I think it's it's important for people to realize that if it's important to you, you mm -hmm. will make the time. You will find the time. Right. Uh, I give you an example. Mm -hmm. Um. In 2024, uh, we start a new project under a new label. I cannot say anymore for the moment. Sure, okay. absolutely. It's, uh, Trade secrets. Uh, undisclose it. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, our business model will be focused on very, very short modules. They will be put not on DM scale, but on drive through. Okay. Uh, because they were. Uh, they will be um, agnostic, agnostic system, okay? So they can, they, they can be used with every fantasy game system. Gotcha. Dungeons gotcha. and Dragons to Warhammer to an OSR, uh, everything. Excellent. Okay. Um, I have already written 35 of this volume in less than two months only by traveling on train wow that's fantastic you are prolific and, but but and you're other, focused too people. like you know yeah. what you want to do and now you have a a kind of uh a system and you yes. that's yours and you've invented and now you can you can do that that's that's you streamlined the process for yourself yeah the other two the other two guys that are in this project yeah. uh, started to say to me, 
stop it. Marco, <laughs> stop it. You're making us look bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, uh, sure. In fact, I have already written as much modules for the first two years of our editorial program. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, this okay. is awesome. You've given me some inspiration now. I, I, you know, I love to write and I need to write some more. This is, this is the reason that I do this podcast to meet uh, people like this and to share that kind of inspiration. Uh, if I can add one more thing. By all means. Uh, another important thing is for me is to add a deadline. Yes. Okay. So if I know that I must deliver within seven days, I will deliver within seven days. Mm -hmm. If I know if I must deliver within one month, I will deliver in one month. That's the reason why I one of the reasons why I started the Patreon. Because on the Patreon, I'm obliged to my patrons. I read them, then I will give him, I will give them one at least one exclusive RPG content a week, at least one a week. Wow. And one full adventure a month. That's impressive. So now I have a deadline. So now I must write. <laughs> so all of those links for the Patreon for your existing work and how to like keep posted for the future work will be in the description box of this video. And uh, that's, that's inspirational. So tell me before, you know, we talk about how did you get into Dungeons and Dragons? Why Dungeons and Dragons? And by the oh. way, is uh, my audience going to ask, is it, uh, how, what's the word? Uh, d is it called Draghi Soteriani or no? How's it no, called? no, 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 the, no, no. The, the name is always name Dungeons is the name, Dragons name, on the okay, end. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was <laughs> never translated. I, yeah. I don't recall if, if in, the, in the 80s was ever translated. Way back then. Uh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I always call it Dungeons and Dragons. Even gotcha. when, uh, oh, okay. Uh, you will be surprised. My first RPG, the first RPG I played wasn't Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. I started, I started, I, I, I always liked uh, to read. Okay. I always liked reading. Uh, when I was a kid, more or less 10, uh, 11 years old. Okay. It was uh, a 1988, 1989. Okay. Um, on every Saturday, every Sunday, every Sunday afternoon, my parents wanted to go to Milan. In Italy, it is uh, very diffuse to take a walk uh, in the center of the city. They call it a passeggiata. Passeggiata? Uh, yes. Just, just a walk. Yeah. Uh, nice look at the, clothes. Look at the shops. Uh, look at walk. the people. Okay. Uh, I ate it. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> My wife and I did this yesterday. <laughs> I, 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 I don't like it. It's boring. And that for me, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, and when I was a kid, I always told to my parents, no, 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 I stay at home. I prefer to stay at home to play video games. And we quarreled. We had a, a struggle. We struggled about it. They, they said I was too young to stay at home alone. Okay. So they corrupted me. Because I like reading. They told me, oh, I will buy you a book in the most important bookstore of the center of Milan. So I went, I went with them. And I discovered the books of the game books of Lone Wolf by Joe Debra. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> and I, every week, they bought me a game book every week. 
And this was called Lone Wolf, you say? Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Never Lone Wolf. Never heard about it? I haven't. Oh, okay. Game. Um, Joe Dever, who okay. wrote it, uh, uh, was inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, he started to play Dungeons and Dragons in the 70s. And at the beginning of the 80s, he started to wrote the game book of Lone Wolf. I think they are, it's the master. The Lone Wolf series is the most famous series of game books. Okay. Okay. After, so after some weeks, I bought all the volumes from the series. So the following week, I went to the bookstore and I, I couldn't uh, uh, buy another Lone Wolf books because there wasn't. And I took another one. Um, but when I uh, the title was uh, something like uh, um, The Forest with No Return okay it was the title not of the series but the, of, the, of that specific book okay, okay. Uh, but when I came back at home and I opened I opened the book I realized it wasn't a game book. I couldn't play alone. It wasn't the mod a module of an adventure mm. of an RPG. And the name of the RPG uh, is a German RPG. The German title is Das Schwarze Auge. It was translated uh, in English only in 03 with the name Dark Eye, the Dark, dark Eye, mm -hmm. but uh, fundamentally it's a clone of the Dungeons clone. and Dragons. Mm -hmm. It's a clone of Dungeons and Dragons uh, with very less, uh, uh, it's a very less um, low magic system, okay? okay. Very low okay. magic system, mm -hmm. um, but it's a clone of Dungeons and Dragons. There's a talk between the narrator which is the dungeon master in that game is called the narrator. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a continuative talk between the narrator and the player. Mm -hmm. When the player um, wants to do something that the outcome is uncertain, the uh, narrator asks for a check. Okay, never. It, it, it's the same roots of Dungeons and Dragons. Sure. In Germany, in Germany, this game was most popular than Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dark Eye is not the core, the literal translation. Uh, liter literally, it would be a look in the darkness. Okay, mm. das Auge, or mm. uno sguardo nel buio. So I realized I couldn't play alone. So I asked my father to buy, and also I realized there were needed rules, rules not included in that. Book. Right. This is just a module. So I asked my father to buy me the rule book of that game. And at the beginning, so he did me on the next Christmas. Uh, at the beginning, I play with my little sister. I forced her <laughs> to be the player and <laughs> I'm the narrator. Okay. Uh, after a couple of years, I went to high school, okay, and then I met uh, uh, a couple of uh, schoolmates uh, that were in a D and D group, where the older brother of one of them was the dungeon master. So I started each each week. Uh, they lived in an, in another town near Milan. I took the train and I go to them and play Dungeons and Dragons. After a couple of years, I created a uh, gaming group uh, here in my hometown. Uh, I as the DM, but we played uh, classic D and D, so uh, B E C M I. Okay, in, um, in the first uh, with my schoolmates, then in the with my group created in my own town, uh, we started to play the second edition of Batches, Dungeons and Dragons. Gotcha. Okay, and we play it. We have been playing it more or less until 2010, I think. 
Uh, That's great. Continuously. Yes. Uh, almost... I played with them. Okay. I played with uh, also other people uh, in Milan and, and around. Uh, then I have uh, a moment of stop because uh, first, uh, first thing, uh, I worked for some years in another city in Rome. When and there, I haven't met any anyone who played Dungeons and Dragons or other RPGs. Okay, uh, because also in the nineties and the first year of the century, I tried a lot of other RPGs. Uh, then in uh, two thousand and ten, I remained alone with my son of two years old. So I most focused. Sure. for four or five years in growing my son. Then in 2014, 2015, I casually found that there was a new edition of the book, the fifth edition of the book. Yes. I downloaded the SRD, okay, mm -hmm. the free SRD, yeah. and I like it. I like it. I like it much more than third edition. It's simpler. Uh, simpler, okay. It's, it's more. Uh, uh, it's friendlier to new players. I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, I like third. I like fifth edition a lot. Uh, I called my my old friends, my old gaming group, and we started to play a game. We bought the first uh, the first adventure, Horde of the Dragon Queen. I just and ran it. it. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> I, I we played it. Uh, we, we bought uh, the original manuals, the player's handbook, the dungeon master guide, the monster manual, and the order of the Dragon Queen, and we started yep. playing. Then, yep. then, then, then I started to, um, I joined the the most important Italian Facebook group, okay, and I started asking things, uh, replying to posts, uh, making posts, uh, and. Uh, more or less a couple so a couple of years after uh i i, be, I began to all the small groups of adventurous league okay um i met her I, mean, I like the organized play or the concept of sharing campaign idea uh, I like a lot because every week you can play with different players. Yes. You can play with different DMs. Yes. And it's very, very, it's very, it's very funny. It's fresh. It's really, uh, fresh yeah. and a lot of fun. And to a lot of, alone, yeah. To play alone is good. Yeah. To play with some people is better. Yes. To play with a lot of people is even much better. Yes. Yes. And especially if opinion. you were and especially if you were the dungeon master. So I've been in Adventure League now for going on a year. I'm similar to you. I played in high school, a little bit of college, and then there was a hiatus. And then when D and D five E came out, friends of ours got together and, and we did that. And then there was a break there as well because one had a child and so he had to like commit to that and that's fine but now with adventure league i can play we play every other week and uh three times a month and um and i'm usually the dungeon master what's great about that is when you create a scenario which i do i will run the modules but i'll run them in my way i have extra elements in there you know that i'll throw in there because that way if somebody's already been has already played that module i have something new and unexpected for them but what's good about that is you get to try out your material on a different mm -hmm. audience all the time and see what works and what doesn't work. And a lot mm -hmm. of times what I think is funny isn't funny or okay. I have to make it, I have to revise it and make it better. Or if I think uh, adventure is tough and then they find a way around it, they found a way around it. Now I have to do something else. And it's, it keeps me, it keeps my mind working. I think, I think that's what I like about the new players, you know? Um. So. However, in, in Italian, in Italy, Adventurous League uh, 
isn't so diffused like in America, okay, like in USA. Mm -hmm. It's very less uh, uh, important. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's two, two reasons. First reason, adventurous leadership model is based on the concept of stores. Yes. You go to a store, yes. you go to a store, you will find a DM, which very often is also paid by the same store. Oh, you we're try not paid. The game, okay? okay. <laughs> we're not paid. You, mm, <laughs> ah, I've been uh, talking with other American and uh, some of the Chicago areas uh, or the Indianapolis area. They are paid, but I think it's good for them. It's local agreement with the stores, okay. Um, but you, you when you go in a store, there's a, uh, there is a DM who uh, who run who runs an adventure for you, okay. Uh, and then he, if you like it, you buy the book, you buy the dice, you buy right. the mini, you buy. It. Okay. In Italy. There's no capillary diffusion of stores dedicated to RPGs. Mm. Stores are few and stores are small. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, sometimes there is there isn't even enough space to hold more than one or two tables. Okay. Second one. If you read Adventurous League, Adventurous League modules, they are straight linear. So this is the goal. This is the mission. Let's go and do the mission. Okay. That's fine. But that's the American way of thinking. <laughs> Italian, Italians mm -hmm. like a lot to speak, to tell their stories to tell the stories to others. The first time we had Adventurous League, I was the organizer, we had a problem with the four or five DMs. After two hours, they haven't finished the first chapter yet. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I, I don't remember exactly uh, which adventure it was, but just for example, uh, if an adventurous league adventurer says we must enter in a dragon slayer and kill the dragon, mm -hmm. you as American will pack your weapons, your gear, and we go to the dragon slayers and kill that dragon. We Italian, we Italian, we start thinking, but why the dragon has become evil? <laughs> but why we can kill oh, okay mm. that's the huge difference mm. so uh uh what i worked uh, with my with the dms with, with, with people who wanted to dm is to focus them on the goal and on the mission of that adventure so yeah you have to have a i i found that a time limit is a uh a ticking clock is useful so mm -hmm. Either one of the party members is poisoned and has to find like a cure for that, or that's an old trope, or like something, you know, something like that. The town will be burned. You know, the army is advancing. Something terrible is going to happen if you don't get it done now, you know. Otherwise, yeah, they can sit around the tavern and talk about their past adventures all the time. Although I have to tell you this Thursday, I'm running an adventure, which is that they meet in a ta they meet in a tavern at it, uh, and there's a contest to tell about their their best adventure. And whoever tells the best story wins, and then we'll reenact the adventure out on the uh, playing table. But but I, so, uh, so I think I would love to run for a party of Italians because I think the, what I enjoy about Dungeons and Dragons is the storytelling, is the original contributive storytelling and how it's different every time, depending on who's at the table. Yes. Uh, the, for example, the first trick I, I told them was take off the prologue. The party already, all party members already know each other. They have just met, they have just received their 
um, marching orders. Their marching orders, and mm -hmm. they are in front of the first obstacle, the first enemy. That's a good start point. Start start in combat. If you start in combat, start that makes a big difference. Yeah, because that way you also find out what each other's abilities are. You can talk about it later. You can talk about your backstory later, but let's find out what this druid can do. Let's find out what this wizard can do. Let's look at the fighter, you know, see what his uh, armor class is. Like, let's, you know, that's that's a really good suggestion. I like that. Uh, actually, I, I'm i not running Adventurous League Adventure modules anymore, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I'm, I'm still part of organized play. I went uh, every Friday, um, which is the most uh, um, important center of um, RPG associationism in Italy, okay, which is uh, um, a municipal, uh, a municipal building in Milan, and in the better uh, if. Oh. People there don't think that number of tables each Friday is a successful metric. Okay, mm. uh, they don't like, and I, I don't like either. Okay, uh, if I want to play to something I want, I really want to play. Uh, I don't care if we are five person, mm -hmm. as long as we still play what I want to. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so number of, uh, of people present there uh, is not a metric of success for us. But if we consider it a metric of success, um, in the most, imp most successful uh, evenings, uh, there, we, there were more than 100 people wow. which playing together 15 20 tables okay at best which for italian levels is high top that's very high yeah top. Uh, usually most successful are around seven eight tables um, most most associations most clubs uh usually make three four five tables okay together um actually in the last uh, in the last in the last month uh, on friday nights we had uh, three different gaming proposals one based on dungeons and dragons uh, one major on adventurous league Another one, uh, a shared campaign created by Scratch from every member uh, on Dungeons and Dragons. They created a world uh, starting from, from zero. And another group uh, play, uh, played uh, uh, an RPG uh, based on uh, superheroes, uh, which mm. is, uh, its name is... Uh, Spectaculars. I assume, I assume, product brilliant, very brilliant, and um, the the evening uh, were in, were structured in manner that every time everyone could choose which of the three games wanted to play. So everybody could play at a different table. If they uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for example, I, I didn't play in uh, in the Adventurous League. Uh, they uh, they run uh, the Adventurous League uh, storyline based on Baldur's Gate: The Sent into Avernus. Uh, I had already done as a dungeon right. master, so I, I didn't. You I know all the secrets. <laughs> I, I wasn't interested in it. I, I sure. I, I have. I, I had no pleasure also in. in DMing it another time. Right. Uh, so I, I played a couple of evenings I played in at Supernatural, another couple of evenings I played in uh, the other D&D campaign. And I personally appreciated a lot this formula, okay? 
Um, and if you add up all the tables, you, you ended more or less around 10 or 12 tables. Gotcha. So what, what, char what character class did you play? Uh, I, Which, let's say know, this. What's your favorite? If you pick a character class, what, what's My your favorite? favorite character class is Cleric. Is what? Cleric. Cleric. Yeah, clerics are amazing. Yeah. Cleric. I'm a pious man, so cleric is mine. <laughs> I'm a bard. I'm a bard. I like I like the jack of all trades aspect to the bard. So that's, that's uh, but in, in the D D campaign, uh, I made a simple fighter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to play something straight, yep, solid and simple. It's fun okay. playing fighters. You know, you know what to do. You your job is to kill and that's it and you just do it efficiently yeah absolutely although sometimes i'll throw paladin in there because i like to have that like you said that pious element into it and there's a little bit of a a, a goal a mission i'm not I'm, i have a purpose i'm not just slaughtering beasts for no reason i have a, a backstory i have a reason for it and you can do that with a fighter as well but, but i find that there's more structure for me mentally when i when I play as a paladin, so if I must choose my favorite class, uh, that would be definitely the cleric. The cleric, mm -hmm. yeah, clerics cleric do a lot of fun stuff, no doubt. Um, Bard in five edition is uh, one of my favorite too. Okay, what is it? Bard. Bard. Is, yeah. Uh, Bard. Bard is one of my favorite. Bard's fun. Edition. Yeah, they're fun to, to to play act. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think. Bard has a real big problem in, of consistency. If you assume that the Bard uses the, the, the primeval song, uh, the primeval uh, is, is like the, 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 the arrow songs of the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right, right. Uh, right. Okay, to, to use its magic, how can it possible? <laughs> yeah Elvis the wizard <laughs> sure the wizard spends years pouring yeah, over ancient yeah. texts in order to learn the knowledge the arcane knowledge and the bard yeah. just doo -doo -doo, yes. and then yes magic, uh, right? I, I think Flutie, it's a, magic flutie if i <laughs> just for example the the D, &D war that created in that campaign mm -hmm. we decided not to have bars <laughs> because Sure. They weren't consistent yeah. to the world we were, we, were, we were creating. That's what's wonderful about Dungeons & Dragons. You can modify it. You can yes. modify that model. You can have high magic. You can have low magic. You can have rare magic. You can have yeah. magic everywhere. You know, it could be like, uh, like uh, Eberron, you know, where it's just uh -huh. everybody has feather fall because you're on these high towers and you're walking across these steel beams, basically, catwalks and so of course everybody has magic otherwise you'd fall to your death you know that's another, what i you know. another dangerous class mm -hmm. it's warlock yeah why, why dangerous okay always not 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 only by not only by the mechanical side okay warlock it's it's wonderful i i as a sign of the dragon i also created a specific volume of warlocks and patrons. Okay, mm. so so I, I like the warlock as a class, as a mechanical class, but it is dangerous. It is a warlock is a dangerous tool for every DM. Why? My opinion, huh? but all always in my opinion. Yeah, tell me. Okay, the warlock is too tentative for the DM. Why? The DM will always use the patron of the warlock as an engine of the story. Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, by doing so, the warlock character will become protagonist of the story of the table and the other characters will be only its companions yep this is the reason why 
the warlock is dangerous. It's unbalanced, sure. So it makes for an unbalanced uh, story. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the risk to unbalance the story, mm. good, bad. The risk to unbalance the story is very high. You, well, I give you an example. Well, if you're writing a novel, that's fantastic. But if you're playing with five other people, everybody wants to be part of the story, and you want to make that as equal as possible. If if you can, uh, it's never going to be a hundred percent equal. But you want everybody at the table to to have a turn and to be their hero of their part of the story. You know, uh, I, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, on August. I went to another city in the center of Italy, Fabriano. It's a small town, but they held a, game, a, a con uh, much uh, uh, visited by many people from every part of Italy. Okay. Uh, I have made some friends there. So here I go there. I take four or five days and go there. The, the, the con lasts four days. Okay. From Thursday, to Sunday, the last Thursday, from the last Thursday to the last Sunday of August. I, I had a, a game as a player, okay, in, in, in a game system, um, a game system created by, by an Italian creator, uh, RPG designer, uh, there in, uh, uh, I never met him personally, uh, but I have met him on social, I, Use, uh, I had some brief chats with him, uh, and the first time I was there and I played at this table. Okay, um, the system is very different from Dungeons and Dragons. It's much more like a PBTA, okay, uh, powered by the apocalypse. And it was a, a good system, and we had an adventure. And that adventure, uh, my car, the character I was playing, uh, was uh, uh, a princess. A princess that left his ancestral home to become a, a sort of paladin. And he was coming back home to the castle, to the manor of his family, of her family, with some of uh, uh, their friends, of her friends. And all the adventures was centered about my heritage, my heritage. So the adventure, uh, for example, there were some uh, areas uh, of the castle that only I could assess mm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some uh, dialogue that, for example, the, the queen of the castle, my mother, only spoke to me. Okay. Uh, the um, old uh, servants was keen to spoke with me, not with the others. So mm -hmm. what I tell to the to that designer, I said, okay, the adventure, the story is perfect. The story was perfect. The story was perfect. If it was a book or a movie. Yep. To play it was unbalanced because I was the hero of the story. My character was the hero of the story. Mm -hmm. The other was only compromise. Mm -hmm. Was only my servants. Okay. I think I think Maybe. story form is important. I think writers get stuck sometimes in a certain story form. They understand it and and it makes sense to them because they have seen so many movies, read so many books. But what we're looking for is really a quest. It's the quest. It's the group that it's it's Star Wars. It's um, the the Wizard of Oz. It's the Lord of the Rings. It's a group effort. And even in the Lord of the Rings, it's not really Frodo's story. It's the story of the ring and how it progresses. It's Sam's story. It's, you know, Pippin and Mary have a part in the story. You know, Aragorn, Aragorn, of course, becomes king. Is it Aragorn's story? No, it's it's everyone's story. And it's hard to write that way. <laughs> so, uh, 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 a little advice I can give to any DM is try not to be a storyteller. Try not to be a writer. 
try to be what you what the DM is really like. The DM is a player. A player and, and an and an arbiter of the rules. So that's yeah. all. like let the let the players tell the story, and then you can facilitate that through interesting interpretations of the rules. Okay, uh, and Dungeons and Dragons, uh, one of the uh, which is the less read book of each edition of Dungeons and Dragons. The, the Dungeon, Dungeon Master's, Master's Guide. Guide. Yeah, nobody <laughs> reads that. Master. Yeah. And the Dungeon Master Guide of fifth edition clearly says what is the role, the role of the Dungeon Master. The player sandbook says that one of the players has another role. Page five of the player. So the dungeon master is a player. And the player. It is told, it is written in the player sandbook. That's a really good point. The dungeon master's guy on page. So I, I'm looking for the dungeon master guys. I have mine over here as well. I <laughs> the Dungeon Master Guide, Dungeon yeah. Master Guide, <laughs> says on page four, which is the role of the Dungeon Master. The Dungeon Master is a creator of words. The <laughs> first part, so the Dungeon Master must set up the context the world exactly like focusing in an adventure on page five of the player sample, it is said, it is written, the dungeon master describes the contest, what the play, what the character sees, what the character smells, what the character hears, what is which is the what is the ambient, what the ambient looks like. It's the same thing from the big to the small scale. So this is the role of the Dungeon Master. But in my opinion, this is a player exactly like all the other player. I like that idea. This is my and I, 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 I don't know in Italy, but I don't know in the USA, sorry. But mm -hmm. in Italy, this concept is not quite understood. Many people tell it, but truly they don't believe it. Uh, uh, for me, the aiming or GMing is not a service. When I was young, I believed it was a service. It, it was the role of the uh, dungeon master or the game master to be a storyteller, to be a bard, to be uh, um, an entertainer. Mm. Now, now, now I, I don't, I don't want to entertain anything. I just anyone. I just want to play with that. <laughs> <laughs> and this, and this concept. Uh, I, I I really don't know if in USA this concept is uh, diffused or, uh, but if, if I say like so, can, can I make some names on your? Yeah. Okay, so uh, for me the, the the most important example of the DM as a service as an entertainer is Matt Colby. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, oh, in that role. He is perfect, okay? He is perfect for that role. Simply, it's not the role of mine. I don't want to be in that role. No, he's, a... he's an entertainer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, i give you another example. On, on June 2023, we had a, a, a con. Usually in Milan, uh, we we had the free RPG day. Okay, 
Okay. Um, we didn't we didn't hold the free RPG day this year. Um, but we had another kind of con that was very different, which was in the center was the player. So we started with a survey asking to everyone, a survey on social media, asking everyone in Italy which games would like to play. Oh, okay. Okay. They choose. There was some uh, Dungeons and Dragons was the first or the second. Um, no, the first was 7C. Oh, yes. The second, I've Legend of the Five Rings. That. The second, mm. Legend of the Five Rings. And the third, mm. Dungeons and Dragons. And, and then oh, a lot of others. Uh, yeah. This was the first salary. Then we had a call, not for masters. Like usually, usually when you make a call, you you you, you make a call for masters. That sure. Are, no, no. We call them responsible of table. For example, I was a responsible of table. I don't like uh, I don't like seven C, and I don't know very well uh, Legend of Five Rings. So. I wasn't able to be responsible of a table for that two games. So I went to Dungeons and Dragons. What was the role of the responsible? The responsible has in charge to prepare everything to play a game, a session of that game. So for example, I created four character sheets, okay? Mm -hmm. One fighter, one mage, one cleric, one wizard, sorry, one cleric and uh, one uh, rogue, okay? Third level. I brought a copy of Dungeon Master's Guide, Player Sandbook, Monster Handbook, uh, Monster Manual. I brought dice. Pencils, rubbers. I wrote uh, 10 possible maps of dungeons. And then I asked the player, the, the other player, who wants to be the dungeon master? Oh, nice. Everyone can be. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, I'm here. I will guide you in the first 20, 30 minutes to create a dungeon, a simple dungeon based on one of the maps you like more. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will help you to create some traps, Populate some map. monsters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, using the tables in the dungeon master guide. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you run the, the game and then be one of the players. This was uh, too hard for many people. At my table, everyone refused, so I was forced to be the dungeon master. Otherwise, we we couldn't play. But yeah. in other tables, in yeah. other tables, in other tables, it is success. My son, fourteen years old, brought an RPG called Nova, and he didn't GM. He was one of the players and helped the dungeon master who was in charge and helped telling him some hints about the rules, uh, helping in some scenes. But in another table, the responsible, uh, which brought uh, um, a, which brought the necessary to run a session of vampires, okay? Uh, it was uh, a little provocatory, but <laughs> we, we did uh, it on purpose. Uh, left all the things there, asked to the other players, uh, do you know vampires? One said, I know vampires. I, I've been playing it uh, for a lot of years. Uh, I think I am uh, a, good DM, a good GM. Good. Then a GM 
This is everything you need to run a GM uh, vampire session. And then stand up and go away. And walked away. And went away. <laughs> and walked away. That's fantastic. <laughs> I so. I have to tell you, that's, that's wonderful. I taught a summer camp this past year, 2023, for the first time and taught kids that were 9, 10, and 11 years old how to play Dungeons and Dragons. I gave them an example the first day. We had five days. The first day, I ran them through a scenario. I didn't even give them character sheets. I just said, you're in a supermarket. The manager says, they're back. What's back? You hear a buzzing noise. There was a giant insect in the, and they had to do something about the giant insect. And they could have done it any way they wanted to. Of course, they were boys. They killed it. But, you know, they could have opened a window and let it out. But they killed, that's what they did. Anyway, yes. the second day I did another scenario. And then the, there were the third, fourth, and fifth days, they ran their own. I had them make a dungeon on the second day. I had them draw a dungeon on the second day. And on the third, fourth, and fifth days, they all ran each other's dungeons. They all ran their own dungeon for each other. And I just stood and watched because I wanted them to learn how to play the game once they left the camp. Yeah, once they weren't, fun. once I wasn't there. So they could play with their brothers, sisters, friends. And and then and that was that's what I thought my job was at that camp. And I did it again in the fall at two different uh after school programs and got paid both times. <laughs> and uh which is wonderful. And uh and I think that older players, adults, could use that similar. We could do that, like you just did at that con. That's a wonderful idea, and I think it's important because I think it's for myself. I learn by doing, right? Yeah. So, so yes. when you come up against an obstacle, you have a question. Okay, we have a question. How do we do this? Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Let's read the books. Let's yeah. read the books. Let's, let's find out. Books. Take uh, out and let's find out. Uh, because one of the most common, sorry, in the back in the nineties, back in the nineties when I was young, okay, uh, usually only the dungeon master had the books, had the rule books. Of course, nobody reads nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. You don't read the whole book. <laughs> okay. Before and you play, so right? Everyone, every, all of us played not Dungeons and Dragons or the other RPGs, but the version that that DM had in mind. Exactly. Exactly. Recently, uh, this is uh, uh, what. What I'm doing is my way to face my middle age crisis. Okay, uh, I'm going back. I'm going back to play uh, basic expert companion, immortal and uh, more uh, master immortal edition of DMD. Uh, so uh, I read for the probably for the first time the fuel rules encyclopedia of the 1990. There were a lot of rules <laughs> that my DM back in high school as it never used. But those rules was the were the better part of the game in my opinion. So I tried. I tried in the last con held we have in Milan on a December. I ran a dungeon adventure exactly by the book, by the rules of Cyclopedia. One of the funnest role playing game session I ever had in my life. So usually in, in the last years, one, one, of the, one of the things I usually want is to play a game and try to, to play by the rules. Not why, because playing by the rules 
means playing the game has the game designer had in mind. Well, not only the game designer, but the play testers too, because uh, yes. when games are made, yes. these guys don't just write stuff and throw it out there. A lot of times these things are, you know, they test on their families, they test on their friends, they test with actual like anonymous groups of volunteers who don't know anything about the game and they sit down and then they improve them and they realize why they needed to add certain rules and take other rules out. So they made all the mistakes that we as beginners coming to this would make on our own and we don't have to make those mistakes because they've already amended those uh, rules in order to prevent us from having to make those mistakes. So why not avail ourselves of that wisdom, right? But and especially the more, the most important pages and the first ones in which there is described which on, on which is based the game, okay? This game is based upon this and that. And so that information give you the right set of the right set of mind to play that game. And usually the introduction is one of the part of the rule book that is less read. <laughs> 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 Maybe instead of introduction, if I ever write one of those books, I'll just say the essential no, no, no. They are very, part. <laughs> yeah, they're very important. Are very important. <laughs> the most important paragraph. <laughs> yes, because the game design. Just, just for an example. Uh, so uh, I look. So this is uh, Blades in the Dark. Sure. Blades in the Dark. Mm -hmm. it, it is the Italian edition. Uh, I usually play in English edition, okay? Uh, this is in, in Italian, I, I don't know why. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I give you a translation, a directly a translation from Italian. Sure. Blades in the Dark, it's a game to live the stories of a group of thieves that is building a criminal firm in the streets of an industrial fantasy series. These three lines. We know what's going on. Settled the mood of the game. Yes. We know that we're not in the rural area. We're in an industrial area. Right? We know that we're criminals. We know we are thieves. <laughs> we know we are criminals. And we know that we're building an organization. Yes. So it's we not know. from... It's Yes. So, yeah, that gives a lot of information in three lines. And and so when we are, what is a role play? Role playing, in my opinion, eh, all what I have said is my opinion. Role playing isn't acting, isn't uh, uh, performing. Role playing is playing well the role at your game. So. If we are playing criminals, I'll act like a criminal. But I, I'll play like a criminal. Yeah. I will I will not act like um, Marlon Brando in uh, The Godfather, okay? <laughs> but I will be a criminal. And nothing else. A criminal that wants to build a criminal organization, not just a criminal. Mm -hmm. which is very different. Sure. Okay. I will not go rob alone or uh, I will play uh, with my comrades to build that criminal organization. I can play, I can act alone. I must yes. play with them. Yes, and I think that's one of the things that Adventure League does right is that all of the rewards in a D and D adventure league adventure are shared at the end. They're are not shared. They're all everybody gets the same thing at the end, right? And what that yes. does is that promotes that that eliminates the rivalry that can happen in yes. groups where you try to backstab or somebody tries to pickpocket another player. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have any of that. So um, this teaches the basic 
idea of the group. You know, the group goal is paramount. Now you can have all those fun little adventures in your homebrew. They're they're a blast. But but I think it's important for new players to realize that you know this is a goal oriented objective, and each of you has a part to play in it and an important part to play in it. And and I think that's exactly. emphasized usually, by that. Yeah. Usually I I say the beginning to new buy players. It's a cooperative game. Cooperative. That's right. It's cooperative. For me, it's a cooperative, cooperative storytelling game, and you get to decide which way this story goes. Yeah. You know? Within certain parameters. I mean, I mean, I, I love the sandbox, but my there's a limit to the sandbox. I can only prepare so much, you know. But as my yeah. depth as a DM and my experience becomes better, then I have a bigger and bigger sandbox because I can say, oh, I can pull this in from this adventure that I ran three weeks ago and, you know, and throw that at them and see how they handle that. So it's, yeah. Yes. Well, Marco, I've had a wonderful uh, time with you. We we went far, far further than I thought we were going to. And uh, hopefully yeah. we can do this again sometime. Absolutely wonderful. Whenever you want, Beth. It's very, Fantastic. very, very nice to speak with you. Oh, thank you. And I my know. Italian, I'm learning Italian, so maybe I can practice that with you uh, a little bit. I can say okay. things like, uh, noi siamo gli uomini. I can say things like that now. But, uh, you know, uh, io bevo l'acqua. But I'll get better. And maybe I'll get some dungeon like terms in there as well. I think you have a good conversation. <laughs> Truly better than mine in English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, your English is impeccable. Um, and your uh, uh, knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons is obviously extensive. And you're a prolific writer. And we want to reward that by putting all of the links that people can obtain your stuff with. And I, for one, am definitely going to take a look at your, pa your Patreon page. Uh, I, I'm amazed that you've set such a high bar for yourself giving people original content once a week and, and, uh, and, and additional content once a month. That's, that's for, far more ambitious for the than base I would level, be. For yeah. the base level. Yeah. For the base level. This is what uh, I promise for my patrons at the base level. Wow. That's, that's really a value. There are four, there are four levels. Go and see. There are four levels. Oh yeah. This is the base level, the entry level. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, is there anything else you want to say before we go? I want to thank you. And I want to, I hope to meet you again very soon. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank everybody for watching and uh, buona notte and happy adventures out there. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.